we're doing right now is we're lifting the lift up. So we can work on it easier and we're actually gonna tackle the rear shocks first before we start doing the front end. So we're just gonna move that lift back. We're gonna lift the rear of the bike up. Take these old shocks off and then put our new ones on, right? Yep. All right guys, so we got the shocks on the rear, and now what we're working on is getting the front face to put this front end on. So we have fender we gotta take off. What else do we have to take off? Don't we have to take the bars off? Uh, yeah, we're gonna take the bars off, and we'll probably put them, lay them down on the tank, the nice and gentle and easy. Um, and then we'll go ahead and, so we'll just take this whole headlight bucket off to the side and then we're gonna basically drop the whole forks out. That's what we're doing, that's where we're at. So we have the original front end taken off. The triple tree is out. I greased the bearing, put the cap back on it, put some new grease up in there. And now we are ready to slide it in, All right? Yeah, and, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the front of the frame as high as we can possibly lift it. Because again, like I said, we put that bottom tree already on it. So we are gonna try to dream weaver it in there, make it nice and easy and not scratch anything. In theory, it's gonna go super easy, not a problem. Yeah. All right, so that's the top tree in, we got the lower tree all sucked up in there, everything's lined up. Um, now all we have to do is we have to put that final bolt on the top, close this thing up, and then we'll tighten the little set screw right there, squeeze it on. Then, it's just putting the rest of the stuff back on. So here's the part where these little riser spacers come in. Pass these up, they're looking good. These ones are gonna be going on the top, and then we have the standard ones, the silver ones. These ones will be going on the bottom. Now that we have the front end all buttoned up, tightened up, we got the handlebars on there. Now we have to focus on the axles. So this axle fits our new front end, but it doesn't fit our bearings in the nine spokes. So I have to take this axle, put it on the lathe, and turn it down so it's the diameter of this axle, which is the original axle. So let's throw this thing up on the lathe and see what we can do.
right guys, I think that's it. All I'll have to do now is check the fitment on the wheel. It should be ready to go. Welcome back to Kingpin Garage. We got Johnny here and we are working on this 1988 FXR. Now, last we talked to you, we were switching out to the dual disc front end, which is a much better situation than what we had. We had the single disc front end, we had the shorter front end, we had the tall shocks in the rear, we had the short forks in the front, which is not working. So now we got the fully adjustable 39 millimeter dual disc front end, blacked out lowers, gold fork tubes, this thing's looking great. Here's what we did with the front wheel. We got both discs on now. Originally, we just had the one. I'm gonna spin this around here. What we had to do, I'm gonna show you a little thing we had to do right here. Now, on the older bikes, you know you got this Speedo drive right here on the front wheel. Okay, that's how the FXR is running. The older bikes are gonna run the Speedo drive in the front. The newer bikes, remember the Speedo, uh, the drive comes in off the transmission. There's a sensor back there. So what we had to do is I had to carve out a little notch. Where's my notch? Right there. This front disc, Okay, it's for the newer bikes, like 2000 and up. Different Speedo, no Speedo drive. They just ran spacers and it was sealed bearings. Now we're running the Timken bearing, running the older style nine spoke front mag. So we had to accommodate for the Speedo drive. So we cut out that little notch right there. That's what we did there. I'll spin that back around because that's gonna go in here. And then Johnny spent the last couple hours machining this fantastic axle right here. And we'll show you what we had to do now. I think I showed you in an earlier video, this is what the stock axle is going to look like, but this is the axle we had to make. So because this thick end right here is going to go right into there. Now the original, you could see, was a lot smaller. So Johnny threw this thing on the lathe, knocked it down, and made that thing straight across so it will go through there. This end is going to fit obviously into there, and it's again even a little, about the exact same size as that one, but the steps are completely different. So. Johnny had to custom make this axle. So great job, by the way. It looks fantastic. So now what we got is we have a 2000 and up Dyna FXDX axle going through older 1988 Timken bearings with a custom axle. So let's see, Johnny also made a little spacer. Where's that spacer? Right there. So we'll get this going in. See how it works. Jack it up a little, see if it spins. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is delicious. There we go. That is a great job. Sweet. There you go. Nice and easy. You got that? Dual disc? Dual disc, all lined up. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to put these Brembos on here. Right. These ones. The dual Brembos. CVO Brembos. CVO Brembo, and you can see they're gonna just sit right there. I'm gonna get them all lined up in there. We're gonna get them all spaced out from side to side, make sure that the disc runs true down the caliper, because that's what you always want. You always want that disc to run right down the center of the caliper. We may need a little bit of spacing here and there, because again, you know, 2001 fork legs, these are like off of a, I think like, like a- 09 CVO. I think are, are Newer? Yeah, I think they're newer. Actually, I think they're off a 12 or something. Uh, but they're like literally brand new. I mean, the pads haven't even been used. And then we're going to run an OEM brake line. We found the perfect length. It's going to go right from here. One piece brake line, Harley brake line, right to there. And go right up to our master cylinder. So we're going to be um, brake bleeding those. Put it on. Everything should work. And then after that, just ride it, right? Yep. Yeah, it's going to be good. So normally if we were bleeding a single disc system, we would do it on the bike, but because it is a dual disc system, we wanted to bench bleed it first. So this is the system that we came up with. We have a rotor clamped in this vise down here. We got the two calipers up on there. And then we have this dual disc line. This is an OEM part all set up there. And then we have these bars clamped in the vise. And there is our master cylinder. So you can explain what we're going to do. So this crazy contraption that you're looking at here, I know you're going to think it's a little crazy, but basically it's just really simple. It's called the reverse bleed. So we're going to pump the fluid from the bottom all the way up till it comes out to the master cylinder. So one way you could do it is you could fill your master cylinder and then suck all the fluid down there till you get all the air bubbles out. Or 
you can shoot the fluid from the bottom, pushing the air out through the master cylinder to the top. It's a lot easier. A lot of times you can just do this, push it all the way in. As soon as it bubbles, 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 gets all the air out, this thing starts to fill it up. You top it off and you'll feel it if you have brakes. In our case, it's gonna be really easy because we can actually squeeze it right here, squeeze the master cylinder right here, and we'll be able to feel if we have brakes on that disc that we clamped into the vise. So it may look like some crazy uh, Willy Wonka contraption here, but if all goes well, it'll be super simple. This is how we're gonna reverse bleed. Forgot to show you that. So this is just gonna sit on these two nipples right here. There we go. And then Johnny's gonna fill that right here with the brake fluid, crack open the bleeders, push down that. It's gonna shoot both sides in there evenly. Gonna come up through these brake lines all through here, pushing all the fluid out evenly. When it gets to the junction block, then only, it only goes to one line. So all those air bubbles will hopefully go out of there and go up through there. And uh, looks like it should work, we hope. So we'll see, we'll give it a shot. All right, now what we're doing is we're bringing this whole setup that we just bled over to the bike and we're just gonna bolt it right back on. All right guys, that is Basically it for this install we got the brake lines on got the brake calipers on master cylinders all done up This thing is looking amazing. We got the front fender on everything is ready to go Oh and the shocks remember we changed out these shocks and the rear shocks And I tell you if you go back to the original video when we bought this thing home the blue FXR we called her plain Jane because she really was plain she was very plain But it was unmolested and that was the thing that we love the most. I didn't even care that it didn't even run, right? I mean, we bought, we bought this thing not even running. It wouldn't start, it wouldn't run, but it was unmolested and that was the thing. It wasn't all torn up, hadn't been wheelied. Guy was super nice. He just was just, you know, regular guy, said he barely rode it. Um, and that's always the ones we love. Oh, I barely rode it at sat in that garage. I love guys like that. So that was a thing. We got an unmolested FXR and we brought it to this. I think this is a huge improvement. If you go back to that original video, You'll see, I think this is, uh, what, 10,000 times better? <laughs> yeah. This thing is looking great. Not only did it improve the aesthetics of the bike, but it also improved the handling and the stopping power of it because these Brembos on the front are just absolutely massive. I mean, check those things out. These things are awesome. With the floating rotors, so we save some rotational weight on the front end. Way better dampening with the adjustable Showas. This thing is gonna be a definite riot. All right guys, that's it for this build. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Thanks. And then what we did was we, I already tightened up this bottom one and I'm gonna tell you the reason why I don't normally do that. Normally I'll put the triple trees in there, get everything dialed in and then I'll slide the fork tubes in. Problem is, if you ever dealt with these gold tubes or any kind of tube that's been coated in any way, if you slide those in and out of the triple tree a bunch of times, it scratches the sh out of them. So what I did was I pried the bottom tree open on the bench when I was setting it up, pried it open, measured this distance right here, okay? Transferred it to there, pried it open, slid it on nice and gentle with a piece of paper in there. I slid a tiny piece of paper in there so it wouldn't scratch up the tubes tighten it down where I think it's gonna be so I have a good baseline. If it shifts up and down a quarter of an inch, that's fine. But if I put those trees on and I keep sliding those tubes in and out, it's gonna scratch the crap out of them. And those are $450 tubes and I really don't feel like buying another set. So on top of the other one that you bought? On top of the other one I bought because, <laughs> because I ruined those because of the powder coating. I didn't clean some sand out. That's a whole nother story. Johnny will tell you that one later. It doesn't matter. The point is I screwed that one up. That's on me. I'm not gonna screw it up again. So.